Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today to our cooking demonstration. My name is Ben and I am one of the program managers here at the Conflict Resolution Center in Montgomery County. Before we get started today, I just want to remind you to click that button below to register for our free virtual gala on October 12th. And also if you wouldn't mind clicking that donate button up above, it really helps us out continuing in our efforts to strengthen our community piece by piece. As an added benefit, every donation of $35 or more enters you in for a chance to win one of Chef Amelia's famous spice blends. Now, without further ado, I'll let you enjoy the show. Enjoy. And thank you for joining us today. My name is Ben and I am the Prisoner Reentry Program Coordinator for the Conflict Resolution Center in Montgomery County. Today, we'll be creating a delicious meal with the incredible Chef Amelia and our mixologist Tiffany. And in the interest of preventing conflict, everything we prepare for this meal today will be 100% vegan so that everyone can participate and everyone feels comfortable eating. Um, as we get started today, I just want to let everybody know that I do have roommates and they might be popping in and out of the video as they make their own meals. Um, you know, living with roommates can be pretty stressful at times, especially uh, when one of them is taking up the entire kitchen for a cooking demonstration for his job. Um, we mediate conflicts between roommates all the time and um, even more conflicts between like tenants and landlords and that kind of thing. So, you know, without further ado, I'd like to uh, pass the reins off to our mixologist, Tiffany, who is going to be showing us how to craft our signature cocktail for the day. Thank you for that introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here with you all. Um, Tiffany from Specialty Cocktails. And I am here in my home basement, one of the places where I like to relax, relate, and release. And that will be the name of the signature cocktail that I'll walk you through on how to make. Uh, the ingredients for the Triple R will use a light rum. And my rum of choice is a party. Uh, this one is light, it's, it's a go-to, it's favorite for mixing rum cocktails, so I wanted to use that one. Um, I have an infused coconut water that I'm gonna put into the drink. We'll use one ounce of this. And normally when I make drinks, I like to use simple syrup. Simple syrup is an easy one-to-one -one ratio of water to sugar, one cup water, one cup sugar. But this time I wanted to use something with less sugar. And coconut water is low-cal, it's naturally uh, fat-free, cholesterol-free, high in potassium, and super hydrating. So I thought it would be perfect to go with relaxing ourselves, um, getting some rest, letting our body rest in this way, and using um, less sugar. Um, I'm also, well, within the coconut water, I infused it with mint. So today I have fresh mint from my friend's garden. Um, I used fresh uh, ginger root. And we'll also muddle some lemon. If you can see that here, I have lemon and I have cucumber. So we'll use all of those ingredients. My tools, I will have shakers where we can mix the drink, we'll chill it, and we'll serve it up. Uh, I have a strainer, my jigger, so I can get my perfect measurements, and the muddler. And all of these tools you can substitute with uh, something you already have in your kitchen if you don't have the actual bar tools. Um, a wooden spoon would be a good substitute for uh, the muddler. If you have a slotted spoon, that can take the place of the strainer. A measuring cup in place of the jigger. And uh, if you have a mason jar and if you don't have a shaker, you can also use a mason jar as long as the lid is tight and it's leak proof when you need to mix the cocktail. So that is everything. Let's get started. Are you ready? Okay, we will start with adding our one ounce of the rum. So I'll measure that. So I'll put that in one side. Then I'll also add the infused coconut water with the mint and ginger root. Okay. On my other side, we're going to muddle the other ingredients, the lemon and fresh ginger root and the cucumber. 
Muddling is the process of using the muddler and you're pressing, the goal is to press out all of the fresh herbs, the essential oils, the juice. So you really bring all of those flavors forward and then we'll add them to the coconut and the rum mix. And it really adds a lot of flavor to the drink. So I see some people are still doing the coconut water. So I will show you, I take two slices of the lemon, drop that in there. I take a couple of the cucumber slices. I just used an English cucumber. I sliced it up and drop that in. And some of the ginger root. Now I love ginger. It is one of my favorites to use. There's so many health benefits to ginger. It's anti-inflammatory. It's um, great for cold and flu remedies. It's really a go-to and it definitely supports your immune system, which also is part of the relaxation when you don't have to worry about health and you're actually adding in ingredients to support your health. Um, so I have everything in the, the bottom of this cup and I'm taking my muddler and what you want to do is press and twist and you just repeat that motion a few times to make sure you're pressing out as much juice and flavor as you can. Press that like that. All right, when a little puddle starts to form at the bottom, I think you pretty much got as much as you, you possibly can, but if you can smell it, all of this is going into your, your drink. It's gonna be fabulous, refreshing and light and citrusy. I think you'll enjoy it. So I'm gonna add ice. I'm going to put both sides together. If you have um, another jar, if you're using a mason jar, just add all of the ingredients together and close the lid. And then you're going to shake. So this is when, when you feel like you got a good shake and everything's pretty uh, well blended together, you will use your strainer and grab a glass. So I'm using a cocktail glass. When you serve a drink up, the important things about it is you chill it in the strainer or in the shaker, you strain it, and then you serve it without ice. It's just served chilled and that's called up. So I'm gonna pour it. And if you measured everything just right, it's perfect, perfect pour. Got it? <laughs> okay, and last but not least, your garnish. So I'm going to use some of this fresh mint that my friend gifted me. And why not some more cucumber since I have it? And here you go. This is called the triple R. Relax, relate, release. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. Thank you, Tiffany. Sure. <laughs> I do not have a cocktail glass. I am drinking oh. a short glass, but. Mm. Smells good. Ooh. That is Thank you, thank you, Tiffany. Anytime. Right. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Yeah. Hope you enjoy it. Yeah, and I really like the name that you gave the um, relax, relate, relief. You know, I mean, that's perfect for t when you're talking about conflict. Um, you know, when you're talking about you're just dealing with conflict, you realize that you're in conflict with somebody else. Those are great three steps to take. Okay, so the first thing you want to do relax, okay, calm down. Um, you know, when emotions are heated and emotions are high, that's when you tend to make bad decisions and conflict and escalate things and, you know, get conflict to the point where it can't be resolved or it's difficult to resolve. So taking that first step to relax really does help settle things for you and for the other person. If the other person sees that you're relaxed and that you're mellowing down, then they might follow suit as well. Okay, and then the next step is to relate. Right, so it's always good to put yourself in the other person's shoes um, to, you know, think of things from their perspective. You know, 
to try, try to understand where they're coming from. Why are they upset? What's going on for them, right? And then that's when you can release. That's when you can take the proper steps now that you've done um, all of your homework, so to say, for the conflict and take the proper steps to getting that resolved. So thank you again, Tiffany, I appreciate you. Thank you have you. a great rest of your day and I will thank enjoy this delicious you. cocktail. Delicious and refreshing, Tiffany. Thank oh, yeah. you. Yes. Very, very good uh, drink, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> All right, so with that, I would love to introduce our chef for the day. Chef Amelia is gonna take over and um, I'll throw it on over to her and she'll talk about our first course. All right, welcome guys. I'm so excited that you guys are gonna be cooking along with me. I've been doing, um, since COVID, I've been doing a lot of virtual classes, but I've been doing them in demonstration mode because I have so many people coming in. So I'm excited to actually do a cook along today because now I actually have some participation versus me just feeling like I'm just doing all the cooking and demonstrating and you all can actually taste what you are making. So I'm excited about that. Um, as Ben mentioned, I'm Chef Amelia Irene. I specialize in um, vegan, plant-based, health-supportive cuisine as part of um, my chef business. And um, I wanna, um, the, everything today is going to be uh, prepared vegan. Um, if you are not vegan or vegetarian, as I was explaining to Ben and Jasmine before you guys came on, the Creole sauce that we're going to make is a very essential um, basic sauce that you can use and change up. This is kind of just the base sauce that you can use and for a variety of different um, reasons. So if you are vegetarian, you want a little dairy in there, you can take this base Creole sauce, add a little heavy cream in there, put some pasta in it, and you have a nice um, creamy Creole pasta. So we're going to do it over rice. If you haven't already, before we go into the salad, if you haven't already prepared your rice, I wanna go ahead and give you an opportunity to prepare that now so we can kind of get that going so that it's already done by the time we get to the second course. So if you haven't prepared your rice, do a cup or two of rice already prepared and have that set aside. I'm gonna, um, again, remind you, the whole purpose of putting the questions in the chat while we're cooking is it enables me to have the center view always on the food instead of um, opting to between various participants. So that's primarily the, the main reason for the chat. Not that I don't want to talk to you guys as I'm doing it, but it, it minimizes the screen changes in Zoom. I also wanna make you aware that I have two cameras going. So you're seeing me face forward now, but I'm gonna actually switch over to what you see as stove cam. And I'm gonna mute and take off the camera on, on the laptop that I'm using as my front view. And everything primarily will be what you see on the stove cam. So I have, um, you can see kind of my hand here, and that is where you see some of the prep ingredients already. So if there are no questions, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, have your rice prepared, and we're gonna move into the first course. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna turn off this salad. camera again. Turn it over um, by the way, my niece is here to help me. Up and she helped me with my classes, and, and I'm excited. excited. This is Before giving her an opportunity to, to really All right. um, understand. So let's get going. I'm working, and um, I have some of the ingredients well. so for the salad. She will help me switch my camera so that I can be technology up. So she's gonna go ahead and turn that off. Probably our easiest course. If you have not, um, we're gonna start with toasting the pecans initially, but I wanted to share with you some of the ingredients that I already have um, prepared. This is a combination of the arugula. Okay, you should still see well me and you should be looking at that I've already cleansed and cleaned up and also use the spinner to remove any excess water and moisture. I have some of the, this is one orange that's juiced and strain. I strain it um, just to remove a lot of the pulp and any seeds that may come out when I'm juicing the orange. I have some orange slices that I also cut. This is optional for the salad, but I have some that I've sliced and I'm removed any seeds. Then I have a little bit of um, the olive oil, the maple syrup, the pecans as well. And then this is the Dijon mustard. I combined the two, the Dijon mustard 
and um, some of the maple syrup as well for the dressing. So I have the ingredients for both the salad and the dressing. And then the spice blends that I'll be using, um, this is the cayenne, um, which is again optional for the pecans, as well as some salt and pepper. And then also have a little bit of paprika also for the maple pecans. So I'm gonna start off with toasting. We need to toast those a little bit, the pecans. This is just a simple baking sheet. Add the pecans, the chopped pecans. Evenly disperse those in the baking sheet. And then we're gonna just toss those in the oven for a few minutes. You can also do this on the stove top, but I prefer just tossing them in the oven. So I'm gonna move these ingredients to the side and I'm gonna get a mixing bowl. So the pecan should be, you can also, um, if you don't wanna toast them, they make, um, you can, in the store, you can see maple pecan toppings. You can already have them already mixed up and you can skip this step. But I did wanna show you if you were gonna make your own, how you would go about the process um, of doing a really quick maple pecan topping. But you can already buy them, um, usually in the salad section in your grocery store. So I have, um, I'm gonna give you guys a minute. It looks like you have the pecans in the oven. We are gonna start with the dressing. If you have not already chopped your lettuce and arugula, or you could, you've already bought a pre-bag blend, you can already have that out as well. So for the dressing, I have a mixing bowl. And I would advise that you use the mixing bowl large enough that you're going to dress the salad because I'm gonna dress it before I plate it. So we're gonna put everything into one bowl and then plate it for um, how we would plate it to eat. All right, so we're gonna, we have our orange juice. This is our juiced orange. We're gonna put that in the bowl. We have our maple syrup and mustard that we can add directly to the bowl as well. And that also included the white balsamic vinegar as well. So in the bowl, you should have your orange juice, your Dijon mustard, your maple syrup, as well as the white balsamic. And you can switch it to um, any other balsamic. I like the white um, in this one because it gives a nice, clear, um, translucent consistency of the dressing. All right, and then we're gonna take our olive oil and you should have a whisk. And when you are doing a vinaigrette, you have to make sure you are doing your, your um, look in this case, the orange juice and the balsamic and the mustard, the oil is going to bind to that. So we're gonna emulsify. Um, the mustard also serves to help as an emulsifier as well. So we're gonna slowly add in our olive oil and we're gonna whisk it in. And it should slightly thicken as you are whisking. You'll still see some of the oil droplets, but for the most part, the mustard should help emulsify the dressing and it should be combined. I'm gonna add a little bit of the salt and pepper to taste, just a dash is sufficient. And with that as well. And then we can set that dressing aside. By now, our pecans should be nice and warm. So we're gonna pull those out of the oven. So now that we have our pecans, it looks like some folks are already ahead of me mixing. I need to speed up. You guys are, are doing great. I'm going to take the pecans and I'm going to add them to a bowl.
in that bowl, I'm going to add a pinch of the paprika and a little bit of the cayenne. And again, that's optional. And a little bit of the salt and pepper. Then I'm going to take the other reserved maple syrup. and pour that over the pecans and simply toss everything together. Now, if you would like, um, you could as another additional step, I like mine um, just slightly warm. You could easily put this back in the oven and toast it a little longer if you had um, either a silpat, um, a silicone baking sheet or um, you could also use parchment paper. But I like mine just slightly warmed and tossed in the maple syrup. So I'm gonna set those aside and we're ready to plate. So I have, I'm gonna get the dressing. I'm gonna take our lettuce blend. I'm gonna add it to the dressing. I'm gonna take my tongs and simply toss it in the dressing to make sure that I have easy, evenly coated all of my greens. And this is again, arugula and romaine. And then I'm gonna take my bowl and I'm gonna add my tossed greens. You can also, if you're not ready to eat this in a picture, you could also make the dressing aside, set it aside, have your greens prepared as well. Set it aside. We're gonna now take those pecans. And slightly drizzle them over the greens. And then I'm gonna take some of my orange slices and periodically place them in the bowl as well. I can't wait to see some of the photos of you guys of your prepared. So hopefully you can take a snapshot and I'm gonna add some up here in spiritically throughout. You can also, as another variation, if you like onions, um, you could do some pickled onions on here. That would be a nice addition to this salad, some pickled onions. Um, you could also um, toss in a few olives if you like, just to counter some of the sweetness from the vinaigrette, as well as the pecans. But here you have a simple maple pecan arugula salad. All right, so we can go ahead and unmute. If you have any questions, let me know before we move on to the next course. I will say, Chef, yours does look a lot more beautiful than mine, but that's okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, this salad is a great metaphor for what we do as a conflict resolution center. Um, we are a, a community center, okay? So we do everything we can to strengthen our community. And um, part of what makes our community so great is that it's people from all different kinds of cultures um, and ethnicities and uh, you know, just parts of the world all come here to Montgomery County and they blend into a beautiful, beautiful group, much like your salad there, Chef. Mm. All right, so any additional questions? That's, it's very tasty. Yeah, it's good. Okay, perfect. So, if no questions, we're gonna set our salad to the side. Um, you can use, I'm, I made two cups of rice because I, I quite honestly, I made enough for uh, my sister's family to have some uh, food, but you can make a cup. I have a bowl that I'm gonna plate it in. Um, you can just do a small single serving bowl when you're doing it for plating for purposes today, but you can um, make sure, make a minimum of a cup of rice. So it'll be a cup of dry rice and then um, two cups of liquid. 
I, um, you can use water. I often cook my stock as a recommendation. I cook my um, rice in stock, actually. So I use it in um, veggie stock, um, a little bit of either the vegan butter, or you can drizzle a little grapeseed oil in there and some salt. And that gives a nice fluffy texture to the rice, as well as more flavor than just simply using water. So I have my rice already prepared. I will pull that out when we are ready. You can keep it in the pot. Um, and if, if it's on, we, it can be um, cooking while we're making the Creole sauce. So I'm gonna show you the ingredients of the Creole sauce. I hope that answers your question. Before we move over to the actual stove on the stove cam, <laughs> I'm gonna show you the ingredients for the Creole sauce that I have already pulled out and prepared. And then I'm also going to show you how I chop, before we move over to the stove, I'm going to show you how I chop my zucchini and squash because I want it to be a little bit more of a um, half quarter inch kind of thicker dice um, so that you get a little more hardiness in the Creole sauce. So I have a can of crushed tomatoes that I've already open. So if you haven't already opened your can, open your can of tomatoes and you can put them in a bowl. I have it just in a pyrex pyrat dish so it easily pours into the pan. So you want to go ahead and open up your can of crushed tomatoes. I also have chopped a nice trio of yellow onions, green bell pepper, garlic, and celery. So that is just nicely um, in a dice. I also have um, mushrooms and carrots. This is optional in terms of um, both the mushrooms and the carrots, but I love the meaty um, texture that it brings to the sauce when I'm doing a veggie Creole. And this is just diced um, carrots and mushroom. Then I'm also using both squash and zucchini. I have um, some cut already, but I wanted to show you how I um, dice my zucchini to get my chunks that I want for the consistency of the sauce. In addition, I have a little bit of agave. You can also substitute that for um, sugar or you can, like a tablespoon of sugar, or you can use some of the maple syrup as well, since you already have that out if you don't have agave. Um, any, it's just the sweetness to counter the acidity of the tomato. I just have some salt and pepper already prepared out. And then this is um, what I call actually my Crajan season. It's a combination. You can use any kind of Creole blend, um, but you can use a, either a Cajun or Creole blend. Um, I call it a Crajan because it's a combination. Usually the difference between your Creole and your Cajun blend is one has um, more the fresh herbs of thyme and rosemary, and most Cajun um, spices do not have the herbs. It's just simply the spices. And then you can use olive oil or grapeseed oil. Um, I prefer to use grapeseed oil when I'm sauteing um, because it's a higher heat oil, so it can withstand um, a higher heat than most um, other oils. So you can use um, grapeseed oil, um, olive oil. I had olive oil on the recipe um, but you, either one is fine if you're not doing a very high heat on your olive oil. All right, I'm gonna show you really quickly how I cut. So I cut the zucchini and the squash, the whole zucchini and the squash in three sections. This is what I reserved as um, left to show you in the demo on how I cut. Now I'm gonna take my, not my chef knife, and I'm gonna sit this flat on the cutting board and I'm gonna create three planks. So I'm gonna cut this in three different planks and I'll have a nice half inch plank. Then I'm gonna come behind and cut my single plank into three additional cuts. And now this will become another three chops. So I have now about a half inch slice here, three of them, and then I'm just gonna come through and now chop again. So that gives me the nice 
chunky consistency that I want in the Creole. And that way it doesn't, I still have a little bit of bite in there when I combine everything. So you guys give me a thumbs up if you're already chopped and ready to make the sauce. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I wanted to make sure that folks had an opportunity to chop. And I would do the same thing for the squash as well. And you can sub out additional vegetables. You don't necessarily have to use the squash or the zucchini. These are my preference. Um, sometimes I'll just seed, takes out some of the seeds that helps with reducing some of the water content as well when you are sauteing. But you can use um, any manner of vegetables that you would like. So we're gonna switch over to the stove so I can show you how I prepare the sauce. So I'm gonna take all of my ingredients over. So in this, um, I see you had a question about what size. This is um, about a 12 inch, I'm gonna have Jayla zoom out just a little bit more. This is um, about a, a 12 to 14 inch is sufficient. This is a stainless steel saute pan. You could also use um, a Dutch oven as well. Oftentimes um, I will make my, and I see Dutch oven I have, um, let me show you an example. You can also use a Dutch oven saucepan as well. This is um, an example. This is a cast iron, enamel cast iron. So this is um, a little bit like a 10 inch. So just enough to be able to hold all of your sauce. So either type is fine. I prefer um, the larger saute pan. So I have that on. I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of oil. And again, here I'm using grapeseed oil. You can go ahead and add all of your, your trio, your onions, your bell peppers, your garlic, and your celery. You don't have to wait for the oil to heat completely. This also helps to minimize what I call garlic burn because you don't wanna add your garlic to a very hot oil and then your garlic burns too fast it creates a bitterness in the sauce i'm going to let that saute down a little bit i'm going to add some salt and pepper the salt will help the onions and the celery and pepper to sweat which means to draw out the moisture of those onions and the veggies. You're gonna need the salt in order to allow that to happen. So we're gonna let that saute just a bit. Just until the onions are a bit translucent. And you wanna make sure that salt and pepper is evenly distributed throughout. So you wanna stir that in a little bit. And this is on medium to high heat. I don't want it completely on high because again, I don't want my veggies to burn. And I still want a bit of tenderness because this sauce is gonna cook down a little bit. So these veggies are gonna cook down even more once we add the tomato. So I'm gonna let those saute down. If you're adding mushrooms, and um, if you're gonna add the mushrooms, let's say I have mushrooms and carrots, this would be the opportunity, this would be the time to add your mushrooms and your other chopped veggies. Not the, we're gonna hold off and not add the zucchini just yet. That'll be the last thing we add. But if I, I wanna go ahead and get my, because I'm adding carrots, they have a longer cook time and I wanna saute those now. So I'm adding um, the carrots and the mushroom 
to the pan now. And again, we're gonna let that saute down. Looks like everyone has their veggies and rice on the top and they're sauteing. You're gonna stir a little bit, make sure you add your salt and pepper. If you get, um, if the veggies begin to stick to the pan, you can always add either a little bit more oil or you can add some of the veggie stock and that helps to release the veggies from the bottom of the pan as well. So I'm going to let those saute down. And again, I'm not going to fully cook them because when we add the tomato and the sauce begins to simmer, these veggies are going to cook down some more and I still want to have a little bit of bite in the veggies as well. So now we're going to take our crushed tomatoes and we're simply going to add the crushed tomatoes to the pan. And we're going to incorporate all the saute veggies in with the crushed tomatoes. Continue to let that simmer on medium to high. And at this point, I'm going to add some of the rest of my seasoning. So I'm going to add the tablespoon of the spice blend. You can use any Cajun blend. I'm going to add a little bit more salt and pepper, and you would just do a salt and pepper to taste, but a little bit more now in the cooking process. I'm going to stir that in. You could also, as a variation, add a bay leaf at this point as well. Just simmer this down. When you, as you're simmering down, you can add a bay leaf in here as well. And now we're going to add that agave. If you're going to use agave, like I said, you could use agave, tablespoon of sugar, or you could also substitute honey or even the maple syrup. Again, you just want to have a little sweetness to counter the acidity of the tomato. If you, your heat, if your sauce begins to bubble or pop a little bit, just turn the heat down a bit so you can avoid the splatter. You want it to do a nice simmer, but you don't want it to boil. And I'm incorporating that agave. And now I'm going to add the rest of my veggies. So this is the zucchini and the squash. I, cut, I chopped up more than I um, essentially needed because I wanted to show you the cutting process. So you can just add the amount that you desire, um, at least about a cup of um, the veggies. You can also, as an alternative, you could saute these veggies initially and then add it to the sauce, but I like to minimize the amount of oil. So this is a, a way to make it um, healthier by not allowing the oil, too much oil. And I'm gonna let that simmer down a bit and then allow for an opportunity to have any questions or Ben, you wanna interject, I see you're cooking away over there as well but um, this will allow time for the veggies to cook down in the sauce yeah absolutely and I, I gotta say I mean I, just personally this is the most ingredients that I have had in a pan in a very long time 
And as you were saying, or somebody had a question about what size pan to use. I realized I do not have the right size pan. Um, and so if we're talking about conflict in that way, sometimes you don't have all the tools that you need, right? Um, sometimes you're maybe inexperienced dealing with a certain type of conflict, or it's a person that um, you, know, you don't know well enough to know how to interact with to resolve a conflict. So conflict a lot of times turns into a collaborative process where you have to work together with the other person to um, build the tools that you need to resolve the conflict. So in this case, you know, I made do with what I had and used the pan. It might be a little bit too small, um, but I think it can still get the job done. So it's looking good on my end over here though. Smelling good too, for sure. Does anybody, any of the board members here have any questions? It looks good over there, Ben. I'm, I'm really excited to see what you got going on in that pot. <laughs> <laughs> any additional questions? You should also be simultaneously, your rice should be cooking up if it's not already done. I'm gonna let that simmer just a bit more because I just wanna cook down um, the veggies quite a bit before we actually plate it. Um, I also have, um, when I, as a garnish, I have some fresh parsley. So if you have some parsley or if you have some dry parsley, if you're gonna use a dry herb, this would be the time to add your dry herb um, parsley to the sauce now. You um, want to add dry herbs when you're actually cooking and making your sa sauces and you add fresh herbs at the end of the cooking process because you don't want to overcook your fresh herbs. So when you're making sauce, just as a point, you add your dry herbs in the cooking process and then your fresh at the end. I also have my rice already prepared. Again, I make my rice in um, a stock. And so I have the rice already prepared. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that rice in the bowl while that sauce is simmering. I'm gonna go ahead and put some in the bowl that I'm gonna serve this in. I was just going to say that I have a question. Um, I know that the board members have their various um, family members and whatnot around. So I just wanted to ask um, who everyone is sharing their meal with today. Oh, yes, well, I'm sharing it with my sister and her and my niece and my nephew and her and my brother-in-love. <laughs> but I'd love to hear what others and who are they're cooking for. I'm cooking for my wife and my two daughters. And my wife's in the background helping me out, so I don't struggle too much with this. There's my wife. <laughs> and my daughters are upstairs. They're coming down. Hey, come here, girls. Say hi. They're asking who I'm cooking for. It's Lindsay and Lily. Hi everyone. I am cooking for my husband who doesn't want to be on camera, but he is helping. And my son who is a vegetarian. And we're gonna have a really nice afternoon lunch. I am a total novice at this. So this is just a practice of more than likely I'm not cooking for anyone. If for anyone it'd be myself or the trash can. But I'm just sort of here. Um, it was a little too fast for me, but it's okay. I'll do the best I can, but it's probably just me cooking for myself. Hi, all. Uh, I'm cooking for this one here, my and wife, my I'm, wife, Jody. And I'm cooking for this one here, Steve. She's the vegan. I became okay. a vegan about a year ago, so this is really uh, uh, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm cooking with my boyfriend, Rob, so we'll be eating this delicious meal. He's been doing the majority of the cooking, so I just started stirring and I chopped some stuff up. <laughs> it looks like I will have enough for more than just myself. I'll definitely be um, feeding any roommate who um, is willing to try my cooking. I know they don't see me cooking very often, so they might be a little skeptical on uh, 
when I'm talking about I just made a vegan soul food dish, but you know, I mean, my kitchen is open and I will be saving some for my uh, girlfriend as well, who will probably be stopping by my house later today. So she'll give me the, the truthful verdict on how I did. But, okay. Well, it looks good. It looks like everyone is over there. Your veggies should be nice and tender. As you can see, mine has cooked down considerably. So I'm going to go ahead and plate um, mine to show you how to plate it. You can also um, leave it on simmer and cover it if you're not ready to eat it now. Um, but you can simmer that. Again, other alternatives would be to add a little bay leaf into your sauce. Um, any, any number of veggies. I love um, to do portobello. Uh, mushrooms in here as well. I like the zucchini squash sometimes. I, I love okra, so sometimes I'll add a little okra in here um, as well. But I'm going to go to plate it. I have already some of my rice already in the bowl, and I'm just going to take the sauce and I'm going to surround my rice. I have a fresh herb bowl that I keep um, in place. This has a little bit of rosemary, some parsley. Um, I had some dill that I had earlier. So I have my um, herb bowl and I'm just gonna take some of the parsley and I'm gonna chop it up as a garnish. And I'm gonna, I'm noting that I may have been moving a little too fast. So I'm glad we're recording this so you can go back and um, see the steps again. Again, I'm just gonna chop up some of the parsley. And again, we're adding fresh parsley at the end. If you'd like, I'm in, in the blend, I have some dried parsley as well. So I'm just gonna take that parsley and simply garnish. Take a little rosemary just to let people know that there's some rosemary in here as well. I'm gonna chop that also. And that serves as a garnish as well. And we have our veggie creole with rice. So we can just give the time to take everybody off mute if you have any questions. I'm gonna switch back over to my main camera so I can you all can see me for a bit. So hopefully you're tasting it. I hope you enjoy it. Again, you can use any vegetables that you like. Um, I prefer seasonal. But, uh, <laughs> oh, you have a nice, nice rice mound. Gorgeous, we're gorgeous. Right. We're, waiting we're waiting for the Creole. Creole. Yes, love it, love it. And so, yeah, so you would easily just prepare this. The sauce is amazing the next day. I mean, this is one of those sauces that you really could make ahead and then store it in the fridge overnight. And then when you have that, so you're ready to eat dinner, you can bring it out and prepare because those seasonings meld overnight. So a nice, simple Creole sauce, again, with the veggies. Any questions? All right, if there are no questions, we're gonna move on to our third course. I'm gonna let Ben, if you have anything that you wanted to add before I move over as I switch things over. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I probably, I heard someone else had this problem where um, the Creole sauce wasn't ready. I probably could have let mine simmer a little bit more before I plated it, let it cook down a little bit. Um, I mean, it still tastes great, but um, so the way I want to relate that to conflict is that um, sometimes it's best to not just jump in right away and try and fix things immediately. Um, so there are a lot of cases where you need to take a step back and you know take a break from the other person uh, maybe you don't have all the information you need going into the conflict, or maybe, uh, like I was talking about earlier, you need to let some of those emotions drain out of you so you can get a little bit more clarity. Um, things are always better in conflict the more calm you are and the more ready and prepared you are for the conflict. So, you know, I did just, I just threw my Creole sauce in here and it tastes fine. It tastes great. Um, you know, sometimes it does work out if you just jump into conflict. Sometimes you get lucky and things work out and you're able to resolve it really quickly right away. 
but sometimes it is better to you know let things simmer a little bit right let 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 it let it take its course wait till it's ready right so that's all i have for for this dish i mean it's it tastes amazing already i stole a couple bites over there while you were talking but um, yeah, again, it depends on also the veggies that you use. Um, to speed up the process a little bit, you can also saute your veggies outside of the sauce initially to cook them down, to cook them down a little bit, and then add them to the sauce, um, which I do oftentimes because many times I will make this sauce and just the base sauce, set it aside, and then as I cook things to prepare with it, I already have my base sauce done, and then I can add my veggies and other things later. So that's another option as well. Gotcha. I'm going to then, again, if there are no questions, I'm going to switch over to um, the ingredients. We're going to go back over to the stove cam, and I'm going to go over the ingredients for the caramel apples, the vegan caramel apples. I have those. some of the ingredients, ingredients for the delicious. apples. Use your I've favorite apple. Sliced um, my apple. I, I like to saute. You can use any any type delicious. of apple. Apples, these are golden delicious. Um, so these are already sliced. I have the peel on, but again, it's preference. You can do peel off, peel on. Um, you can also make this with a with a separate caramel sauce and it, use it. Use your raw apples to dip. So we're gonna like cook this down a little bit because I'm gonna make them a drunken kind of apple <laughs> blend with the bourbon. Um, but again, you could also make this a nice healthy snack by just making the caramel sauce separate and then use it as a dipping sauce. It's also, this caramel sauce is also great as a topping. Um, if you are vegan, as there are a lot of um, vegan ice cream alternatives now, so this caramel sauce could be used as a topping for that as well. So I have a combination of brown sugar as well as organic cane sugar. You can also substitute the brown sugar for coconut sugar as well as another alternative. So that's our sugars. I have that separated already. I have, again, the sliced apples, the golden delicious. For the caramel sauce, I'm using cashew butter. So I have about three tablespoons of cashew butter. You can substitute the cashew butter for almond butter um, as well as another alternative. And um, it works really well. I prefer the cashew butter. It gives a little bit of a creamier consistency for the caramel sauce. My niece actually prefers the almond butter. So I think it's a personal preference. We did both um, one, in one of our taste testing sessions and she really liked the almond. I have some vanilla extract. I'm using a vegan butter. You can also use coconut butter or coconut oil as well. I'm using the Miyoko's brand. This is one of my favorite vegan alternative um, butters. And this is the European style of the Miyoko's as well. So it's another alternative. If you are vegetarian and not completely vegan, you can also use regular butter as well if you do eat dairy. But I have um, the Miyoko's creamy vegan butter already diced up. And then um, I have a bottle of spring water that I've set aside. And you'll add the water based on the creamy um, creaminess of the texture that you desire when we're adding everything together. And then I um, just have some bourbon that I'm gonna add a little bit to as well. So we have, if we don't have any questions regarding any of the ingredients, I'm gonna move back over to the stove and I'm gonna show you how I saute this up. All right, so we're gonna do this on medium to high heat again. And I'm just, I have the pan turned on. I'm gonna add some of the vegan butter, about a teaspoon of that butter. And it looks like there's a, have a, there's a question. If you don't want to use the alcohol, um, you, can, you do not have, you can omit the bourbon. That is completely optional. This is um, a 12 inch saute pan that I'm using as well in terms of the size. Um, you could also use again, um, a saucepan if you would like to do that as well. 
but I find um, when I use the um, the wider saute pan, it's easier to heat up the caramel sauce and I can whisk it a lot better to a smoother consistency. So I'm gonna add some of the vegan butter. And you can substitute the bourbon for something else. Like if you want to use a different alcohol, you could use the rum. The rum um, would also make a nice combination here as well. I'm going to add just a little bit of the butter. This is two tablespoons of the vegan butter. And you can also substitute the co coconut oil as well. So this is about two tablespoons of the vegan butter. Now I'm gonna add my sugar. So we're just combining all the ingredients. So I'm gonna do both the brown sugar as well as the organic cane sugar, and I'm gonna just put that in with the butter, the vegan butter. I'm also gonna add my cashew butter. And this is three tablespoons of cashew butter. We're adding that to the pan as well. I'm gonna add about a half a cup of the spring water. I wanna check my consistency before I add any additional water. So this is about a half a cup of water and I'm simply gonna whisk everything together. So this is the coconut, um, I'm sorry, the cashew butter, water, the sugar, as well as the vegan butter and we're just gonna whisk that together. And you're gonna whisk it together until the cashew butter is smooth and everything is combined evenly. Now, this is still a little thicker than I want it to be. So I'm just gonna add about another tablespoon of water Turn your heat down to a low simmer. We don't wanna burn the sauce, the caramel sauce. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to that. And then I'm also gonna add about a quarter teaspoon of the vanilla. You can use, instead of the cashew butter, you could also use almond butter as well as another alternative. And you wanna make sure that that is evenly distributed. Now, I'm gonna add my bourbon now as well. Again, you could, you could omit the, the bourbon, you could sub it for rum, The alcohol is going to burn off as you're cooking. You see it's burning off here. I'm gonna add that here. And now I'm gonna add a little bit more water now that I see that the bourbon with the texture that I want until I can get it to the consistency. And now I'm gonna add my apples. I'm gonna turn my heat back up just a bit to allow 
chose apples to cook down into the caramel sauce. I just want my apples just to be a little tender, not fully cooked, but just warm enough in the caramel sauce. And evenly coat it for all the apples. This would also make you could cook down the apples um, longer in this sauce um, for a topping, but I really just want a quick saute of these apples. Another alternative, as these are cooking down, I'm gonna add a little bit more water just to get to the consistency that I want. And I'm gonna drizzle a little date syrup. This is, a, this is optional, but I um, use a Devash um, date syrup. It's one of my favorites. It's an alternative. It's a lower sweeter, um, lower sweet um, component to molasses. You could also use coconut nectar as well. But this is a completely optional step. And I'll send you the link to the date syrup as well. You can buy it um, on Amazon as well. It adds a nice um, color to the sauce and gives it a little bit more of a richness. Again, it's a replacement for molasses. You could also sub, you don't have to necessarily use apples. You could sub peaches are in season. You could do this with peaches. You could do this with pears. And again, you could simmer this down to the texture that you want in your apples. I don't want my, I still like a little bite in my apples. So I'm actually gonna take mine off. Oh yeah, you could definitely use the monk fruit sweetener as a replacement. Um, if you're um, a keto, it's monk fruit sweetener is much more um, keto friendly as well. Um, if you, if it's really watery, um, you can let it boil down and simmer or you can add additional sugar or you can add additional cashew butter as well to get to the consistency that you want. Um, I like a thicker consistency. I'm gonna use some tongs to kind of take this out. This is where I'm, I'm good with mine. Um, But again, to add, um, I'm gonna turn this off. You can add additional cashew butter if yours is too watery or almond butter, or you can add it. I would recommend you do the butters before the sugars to keep it um, the sugar count as a minimum. All right, so I'm gonna just take a few of these apples and plate them. If it's too thick, you can add additional water as well. Ben, you had a question? Yeah, I, I was just saying, I think I'm one of those people who didn't get it right at the beginning and it's a little more watery than I think I'd like it. Um, mm -hmm. But that, and then that goes, goes back to that, you know, I think everybody works at a different pace, um, you know, definitely in cooking, but also in conflict, you know, some people, um, are really anxious to sort of get things settled right away and to, you know, hit the next the spot right right away, right? Just to, you know, get rid of whatever anxiety they might be feeling about the conflict. But other people like to take things slow, right? They like to make sure they understand everything as it's happening um, and, you know, make sure they don't feel like um, the other person's trying yeah, to get what's so in front of them or anything like that. Hired so, um, texture and consistency. Um, I like a thicker caramel sauce, so I use less water. Um, and that's what I said, you can gradually add the water. So the connection is, you know, just gradually add what you need when you need it, um, is another <laughs> connection point. Even when you're thinking about um, resolution, 
as in, in resolving conflict. The caramel sauce, again, like I said, the texture that you want, you could also make this caramel sauce separate um, and not, and saute the apples or your fruit separate and then combine. You can make these together. I usually make it together when I'm gonna use it as a topping for um, something else. You could also um, use this as a dipping sauce. When you make the caramel sauce separate, you can use it as a dipping sauce for raw apples as well, or any other fruit. So I'm gonna, before we switch over back to the main screen, I'm gonna show you, just do a recap of everything we made today. We started out with our maple pecan salad, which was the arugula, the romaine, the toasted pecans with maple syrup, as well as oranges and an orange maple vinaigrette that we made. So that was our solid. As our second course, we made the veggie creole, which is a creole sauce with rice and then a host of veggies, including onions and celery and carrots and mushrooms. And then I used zucchini and squash, topped it over rice and garnished with some parsley. And then for our third course, we finished it off with some of the vegan caramel sauce with apples. And I used Golden Delicious apples. I just garnished it with a little cinnamon um, as well on top. So these were the three courses that we made today. And I'm looking forward to seeing your feedback, some of your pictures, see what you made. I see some of those over there eating some of the caramel sauce. It's delicious. <laughs> It's a nice vegan alternative to caramel sauce. And it's also a healthier way to make it so that you're not buying like bottled ingredients and you don't really know um, what it contains. So I'm gonna switch over back so that you can visually see me so we can chat a little bit and I can answer any questions that I may have missed. This is delicious. My family yeah. is hovering, you can't see them, they're hovering around ready to eat. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I usually, get, I usually get smacked if I eat out of the pan. So we're going to wait to sit down quietly and really enjoy yeah. it. But he did taste everything over, <laughs> over the pan as he was finishing up. Yeah. <laughs> chef, yeah. How did you, chef, how did you become a vegan? Like, how did you become a vegan chef? And for me personally, um, I've always, throughout the years, I would say over the last 20 years, I've gone kind of back and forth between... Um, some form of vegetarian, vegan, plant-based. Um, I finally made the switch for personal health reasons. Um, not long ago, um, a bit four or five years ago, I um, was diagnosed um, with cancer. And so as a result of that cancer diagnosis, I said, you know, I'm going to revert back to a lot of my plant-based eating and detoxing a little bit more. And so I kind of gradually move my way back into it. So yeah, it was, it was definitely um, a good way for me to rebuild after going through the cancer process, to rebuild my body and begin to really help um, clear out a lot of um, the detox and things that I needed to do from the medicines and the, the treatments to counter that. So it was a good alternative for me. And then I decided um, when I first went years ago, over 20 years ago, you didn't have a lot of the plant-based options that are available now. You didn't have a lot of, um, so it was a lot of boring salads and tofu. And I just simply got bored with the lack of variety. Um, so I decided I wanted to go to culinary school and I decided that if I was going to do it, I was going to take that step. And even as an adult, so I decided to take the leap and I chose a culinary school, Natural Gourmet Institute in New York, that was very much so focused on health. Wendy. Yes, Wendy. Mm -hmm. So it was a way for me to decide, you know, I spent my weekends. So I work for the U.S. Forest Service. I tell everyone I work for Smokey the Bear. Because when I say the Forest Service, they're like, what? And I say, I, tell, I work for Smokey the Bear. And if, you old, if you're old enough, you actually know who Smokey is. And <laughs> uh, so I had to educate my nieces and nephews on who Smokey was. So I told uh, I told some folks in the office like we need to really do a better education campaign for the younger generation to know who Smokey is. Um, but yeah, so I did, and I decided on the weekends I was going to go back and forth to culinary school and focus on really more plant-based, health-supportive, just because I know that people need it, even in the workplace. 
um, when you're stressed, when you eat better, you feel better, you engage with others better. So it was just an overall very good decision for me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Amelia, this is Wendell, co-president. I take back everything I said earlier. My wife jumped in and I'm just enjoying this meal right now. See, really great. Partnership, partnership to resolve issues is always a good thing. <laughs> mm, yeah. Teamwork always makes the dream work. I just tasted this. Yeah. It's oh really God. tasty. It's very nice. Very nice. This is amazing. If you get to stay here and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go eat. <laughs> Ooh, this is great. Thank you, Chef. It's amazing. It's very Thank good. You, Chef. I'm starved. I'm ready to eat. <laughs> yes, yes. I was trying to think that would be simple enough that you could easily prepare and cook along. So I hope that that was an easy um, meal where you don't prepare and cook along um, with us. So I'm excited that you all were able to do it. And I started out the beginning the classes that I've been doing very much so demonstration based so people have been watching me cook and so i'm excited to see that you all have made it and you're tasting it and i get that feedback because that's one of the things that i miss when i'm not able to do in-person classes so again i i appreciate you guys for having me today it was my absolute pleasure Thanks. Well, uh, on behalf of the um, Conflict Resolution Center in Montgomery County, um, I just want to thank you, Chef, and all of our board members here today who uh, went ahead and cooked along with us. And I wanted to thank everybody who's watching this and joining in. Hopefully, um, you learned a little something. You were able to make a really nice meal for yourself or your family. Um, with that, I appreciate it, everybody. Um, have a great rest of your uh, have a great rest of your day and enjoy your meal. <laughs>